Good morning, St. John's. Everybody, this is Resurrection Sunday. When I say good morning, I want you guys screaming. Good morning, St. John's. Good morning. We should be excited to be in the house of the Lord today. He died for your sins and he died for my sins. So when I say good morning, I want us to be excited. Be excited to be in his house this morning. Good morning, St. John's, once again. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. That sounds so great. We're going to start off with a praise and worship team as we get ready to bring the word for you today. I'm Clarenda Massingill, and I am going to be the worship leader. I'm going to turn it over to our praise and worship team and see if they can bring some excitement and livelihood in this church today. All right, praise and worship team. time in our service we were called to worship. God died for your sins and he died for my sins. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for allowing to be in this church today. Father God, we thank you for being able to stand before you, Father God, and lift up our burdens. We thank you. We ask all of these blessings in your name. Amen. 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 We'll have another music selection by our worship team.
have another musical selection by our praise and worship team. We're getting the spirit today. blessing me. This is the time in our service where we're going to have our Easter program. Our children have practiced and prepared for this program. And we're going to call there's an insert in our flyer and we're going to first of all have a solo by Jada Stewart. And after Jada, followed by Carrie Massingill. Amen. Amen.
His name is Jesus. Thank you, Jada. Next, we'll have an instrumental selection by Carrie Massingham.
Excellent job, Carrie. Next, we'll have a poem by Catherine West. Okay, I'll be reading a poem called Easter Joy. Jesus came to earth to show us how to live, how to put others first, how to love and how to give. Then he set about his work that God sent him to do. He took our punishment on himself. He made us clean and new. He could have saved himself, calling angels from above, but he chose to pay our place, price of sin. He paid it out of love. Our Lord died on G Good Friday, but the cross did not destroy, but his, his resurrection on Easter morn that fills our hearts with joy. Now we know our earthly death, like his is just a rest. We'll be forever with him in heaven where life is best. So we live our lives for Jesus. Think of him all in, w in what we do. Thank you, Savior. Thank you, Lord. Help us love like you. Amen. Amen. And now we'll have a instrumental selection by Anthony Costum. Amen. Amen.
this is the section I've been excited for and waiting on all morning. It's um, the children's, we're going to start off with a welcome to Children's Church by Micah Sessoms. Wait, wait. Make it sure it's on. This morning, welcome to St. John Baptist Church, where we are all welcome. All of us are special to God. Today is Easter Sunday, and we thank each of you for supporting our Easter program as we celebrate Resurrection Sunday. So enjoy the program. One second. Can you wait one second? This is the recitation, What Easter Means, and it's going to be performed by Florentina, Emily, Micah, Roman, Elijah, Justice, and Sophia, and Caden. We'll have Florentina. Easter means different things to different people. For the people that believe in Jesus Christ, it is about the love of God and Jesus Christ. To St. John's children, Easter means... E is for everlasting life. God promises this is no. I don't know. Amen. Amen. That was good. <laughs> Micah. In the middle. Right in the middle. A is good morning, church. Good morning. <laughs> A is for all who believe in the word of Jesus Christ. All right. That's how you do it. S is for sacrifice. Jesus gave up his life to pay for our sins. All right. Man. Trust. If you trust in God and Jesus, you will live a happy life. All right. Yay. Okay, now turn in the middle. E is for charity. this group a hand and give all of our Easter program participants a hand clap. Thank you. Can everybody take a bow? Stand up in front. Come on. Emily, come on. Florentina. The children will be dismissed for Children's Church, and I know they're excited. Yay! What a wonderful program. Thank you, parents. Thank you. It's been a long time since we've seen this many children in Children's Church. I am excited for that. Now we'll have announcements by our church clerk. Uh, 
All right, choir, we need to make our way back to the choir loft here. <laughs> Y'all don't want me singing. <laughs> you can help me. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All, right. All right. In announcements this week, join us for a community health and wellness fair here at St. John's on April 29th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Further, Zion Baptist Church annual men's day program will be held on Sunday, May 28th at 4 Adams Street in Lynn. The annual workshop will be held on Saturday, May 27th at 9 a.m. The theme, Men Grasping the Emotional Reality. Scripture, Genesis 3-9. Adam, where art thou? Further, the Woburn Historical Society presents the history of feminism in music. In honor of Women's History Month, please join us for the PowerPoint program featuring John Clark and the Great American Music Experience, presenting the history of feminism in music, a hundred year history, 1870 to 1970, of music that played a vital part in American women's struggle for equal status and rights. It will be held on Tuesday, April 18th, at the Flaherty Auditorium in Woburn at 88 Montvale Avenue. The doors open at 6.30. All are welcome to attend. For birthdays this month, we have Lillian Cadet, Cassandra mm -hmm. I'm missing one name, and I'm not sure who that is. Franz Holema. Yes. The 13th. The 13th. Franz I see that we have some visitors with us this morning. If you could please stand, and if you're willing, to give your name in your church home. Amen. Well, I will say that my Mic oh. Oh, okay. Microphone, microphone, microphone. I'm not, I'm not a uh, visitor, but I am a visitor. No, not I have uh, a Baptist church in Boston, my husband, um, Dr. Uh, Roberts. But I'm a 77-year member of this church. I was baptized here. All right, amen. Great grandmother was a founding member. Uh, she is Charity Keller. And uh, my family has been in this church and in Woburn since 1900. So I am glad to be here. My granddaughter, who is late, I don't see her. <laughs> um, I was dedicated here last year about this time. So uh, glad to be here, glad to see you all and to be seen. And uh, I am glad that I managed to make it on Resurrection Sunday. Amen. He is glad risen. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. Hello, guys. How are y'all? Hi. My name is Nick. I haven't Nick Walker. I'm related to Aunt Tony and Uncle Ron. I haven't been here in a while, but it just feels good to be back after so long. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have anyone online? Oh, I guess not. Well, welcome to everyone. Enjoy Resurrection Sunday service and be blessed. Mm -hmm. 
One more thing. Kristen Gray's birthday. <laughs> this is a time in our service where we have a, a call, uh, altar call and prayer request. But in lure of time, I'm just going to pray for everyone. I'm going to ask you all to stand, if possible, and hold someone's hand because this is the time where we are coming, we're putting our burdens at the altar. And we want to leave them there. We don't want to pick them up. We want to leave our burns at the feet of our Holy One. If everybody can close their eyes, all minds are clear. We want an open heart as we call to God today and ask for healings. And we want to send up our prayer requests. Father God in heaven, we come to you today, God. We know that this is Resurrection Sunday, Father God. We know that these burdens that we are laying at your feet, Father God, that you will take them from us, Father God. God, we ask that everybody who is sick and shut in, that you heal them, Father God. You heal them so they're able to come back into the fold, Father God, and do the work that you will have us do. God, we ask that you continue to bless our pastor as he continue to lead us, lead us to the kingdom. Father God, we know that there are people here that are hurting and people that are burned down, Father God. We ask that you take those burdens away, Father God. We ask that you lift them up. Yes, Heavenly Father, we have people who we know are en route, en route to this service. We ask that you provide travel mercy so they can come here and hear the word that you will have them here today, Father God. Yes. God, we know that it's all possible, possible because of you. God, we have a church full of children today. We know that's possible. It's possible because you, Father God, has led them here. You've led them here so they can be the soldiers for you. Soldiers so you can take, so they can go out into the community and bring their friends. Bring their friends so they can hear this word that you will have them here today, Father God. God, we know it's all possible, possible because you have made it possible. You've made it possible for St. John to be here 135, 36 years, God. Through it all, you've been always here supporting us. God, we ask that you continue to provide healing blessings, guidance, God, so we can do what you will have us do. Father God, we ask all of these things in your name. On Resurrection Sunday, Father God. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Call Deaconess West to lead us through altar giving. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. What a blessing. 
What a blessing to be here on this Easter Resurrection Day and to see so many people here is, is just an absolute blessing. And we've reached that point in the service that we all have an opportunity to contribute. Um, we are going to have the ushers come forward with the trays. And if you can stand, I'm going to lead us in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come together to honor you on this Resurrection Sunday. We are filled with your love. We are filled with your joy. And we are blessed that you made the ultimate sacrifice on that cross for our sins and our everlasting lives with you. Father God, you don't ask for much, but please know that we will honor what you would have us do with what is given. Father God, please add and multiply what is taken today in the name of Jesus Christ so that we can continue to do your work as you would have us do in this world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. <clears throat>
We'll have a couple of music selections by our worship and musical team. Thank you. We're going to need y'all on your feet for the song here. Let's go, church. Thank you. 
should have thought this through. <laughs> I love you, Lord. Your mercy never fails me. All my days you have held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing to the goodness of God. I love you, Lord. Thank you. Your mercy never fails me. All my days you have held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I promise I will sing to the goodness yes. of God. Because yes. yes. all my life you have been faithful. <laughs> all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I promise, Lord, I will sing to the goodness of God. Every day, I promise I will sing to the goodness of God. I love your voice. You led me through the fire <laughs> in darkest nights you are closer than no other I've known you as my father Lord I've known you as my best friend and I have lived in the goodness of God I know I don't deserve it, but I've lived in the goodness yes. of God. Because yes, yes. all my life, you've been faithful. All my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath, that I am able, Lord, I promise to sing of the goodness of God. Because all my life, you've been faithful, Lord. All my life, you've been so, so, so good. With every breath that I am able, thank you, Lord, to let me sing to the goodness of God. Thank you, Lord, you let me sing to the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after, is running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything, Lord. I, I will praise you to the goodness of God. Because all my life, you get Faithful to me, Lord. I know I don't deserve it, Lord. All my life, you've been good, so, so, so good, 
Lord every breath that I am able I promise Lord I'll keep seeing to the goodness of God oh I will sing to the goodness of God I will sing to the goodness of God Let's give the Lord some praise. Amen. Amen. This is the day that the Lord had made, and I shall rejoice and be glad in it. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord Jesus today, for he is risen, and he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 All my life, the Lord God has been faithful. And all my life, he has been so, so good. Amen. Do you know that to be your testimony? Amen. If you know that to be that your testimony, then just give a good shout of hallelujah. Amen. 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 Giving all praise and honor to the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the head of my life. I am not ashamed of the Lord. And I know, even though I've been towed up from the floor, the Lord Jesus Christ is not ashamed of me, amen, because he's been faithful, amen, transform me in my life. It's so good to see all of you out today here at St. John's Baptist Church. It's a pleasure to be in the company of the saints, amen. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. you looking good in Jesus today. Amen. Let's give God some praise for looking good today. You got your Sunday best on today. You're out and you're looking good. And I pray to God that you're feeling good because of what the Lord is doing in your life. I'm also grateful and thankful for uh, St. John's Baptist Church and all who are here uh, to help facilitate the service. Did we have a blessed children, children's program today? <laughs> Did you see the children? Amen. Children were demonstrating their gifts and love for God, and there's nothing wrong with that. Everybody has a gift, and every child has a gift, and it's up to us as the church and as men and women of God and as guardians and parents in their lives to help them to nurture their God-given gifts. Amen. Amen and amen. I'm also grateful and thankful for my wife and my family because, because you know, I, I can't do this by myself, amen. All of you know that, uh, well, my daughter's here today. Apollonia, could you please stand up, amen. That's my daughter. That's my soon-to-be son-in-law, Kyle, stand up, amen, amen. Praise God, amen. Uh, there is a wedding taking place this year, so please keep her in prayer. Praise God. You don't, you don't got to keep me in prayer about that. Keep her in prayer. Amen. Amen. Now, keep them both in prayer. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. There is a word from the Lord. There is a word from the Lord. If you could please stand for the reading and reverence of God's word, I'll read scripture. We'll have a word from the Lord. Today's word is coming from the book of Mark, chapter 16, verses 1 through 11. I will read for our hearing. That's the book of Mark, chapter 16, verses 1 through 11, reading from the NIV. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome both bought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. 
very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb and they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in white robes sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. When Jesus rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had driven seven demons. She went and told those who had been with him and who were mourning and weeping. When they heard that Jesus was alive and that she had seen him, they did not believe. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearing, the reading, the understanding, and the life application of his holy word. Gracious and wise Heavenly Father, I pray now that you just hide me in the shadow of the cross. Bring me deep down into your storehouse. Dear Lord God, pray that you would just let the resurrection power of the Holy Ghost reign, rule, and abide today. Pray that all that is said today, dear Lord God, touches everybody and misses nobody from the pulpit to the door, from the rooftop to the basement floor. We pray, dear Lord God, that you be glorified in you alone because you are worthy. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And all the redeemed of the Lord can say, Amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of God. Amen. If you could just hold on to this thought, hold on to this theme, hold on to this idea. The resurrection of Christ makes the difference. The resurrection of Christ makes the difference. The resurrection of Christ makes the difference. Look at your neighbor once more. Say, neighbor, oh neighbor. That preach is about to preach. The resurrection of Christ makes the difference. Amen. Amen. On Good Friday, Jesus Christ was crucified and he breathed his last breath and gave up the ghost. Jesus Christ was crucified amidst a toxic atmosphere. For the Bible informs us that there was torture. There was the beating of Jesus Christ. There was the mocking of Jesus, the bloodshed of Jesus. The Bible informs us about the betrayal of Jesus. It also lets us know that Jesus Christ was set up. There was the misuse of governmental powers to come down on Jesus. There was the crime against this innocent Jesus Christ. There was the darkness of heart and the sinfulness of mind, the cruelty of soul that was unleashed from humanity upon a holy, pure, righteous, and gentle Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who had did nothing at all to deserve such treatment. The awful brutality that we saw there on Good Friday is a reality of sinfulness 
and also a spiritual warfare. It was not just flesh against flesh, but it was the spirit of God warring against demonic spirits. Yes, there's demonic spirits. Yes, we see ruthlessness acted out and can point to the spiteful behavior. But we must also understand that there's a derivative here, and it is that there's a spiritual battle at work. For Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and Satan and his legions of demons desire to destroy the Son of God and will work through any person to accomplish such a diabolical plan. You see, the Bible teaches us in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against powers of this dark world, and against spiritual forces of evil and heavenly realms. The spiritual battle reaches new heights of sinfulness and humanity with the help of Satan and the help of death to murder Jesus Christ, but they failed. They tried to murder Jesus, but they failed to murder Jesus. See, indeed, Jesus died, but only because he gave his life. Not because anybody in earth or any demonic spirit could take his life. Death anxiously grabbed hold of Jesus. Biological functions had ceased, and it looked like Jesus Christ was dead and gone. The body of Jesus Christ was taken down from the cross. He was quickly prepared with spices and laid in a borrowed tomb. And approximately a two-ton boulder was put over the top of the tomb. Jesus Christ was beaten and battered and his body was buried. This is the context with which we find the scripture today. We find this, that this great evil has occurred in the world and all the hell and how order broke out against Jesus Christ. Every way he turned, he did good, but they wanted to use his good and turn that into evil. And they went so far, and the, the, the crooked Hebrew people, they went so far using the crooked government and even sought the help of demonic spirits. To hold Jesus Christ in the grave. But you see here, that is the context for which we see in here in the Bible. But that's the context for which we live in our life today. That there's evil in the world today. Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome bought spices to anoint the body of Jesus. All they wanted to do was go and make sure that Jesus Christ had a proper burial. And so they moved with haste to take the body down, and they had him buried in this borrowed tomb. But on the third day, they got up early in the morning to go to see how they could bury Jesus properly. They rose early, amen. Say rose early. You see, it's the early bird that gets the worm, amen. That, 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 that sometimes we want to do things late. And we, we go to work late, we, we drop the kids off late, we, we, we do everything late. But here in this text, these women rose up early, amen? They rose up early because they were going to go and pay respects and make sure Jesus had a proper burial. Not only did they make the investment of raising up early with time, but they made the investment of spending some money to get some spices, amen? Amen. They were investing in their relationship with the Lord. Amen. And I know that many of you are some beneficiaries of some women that had invested some time with the Lord and that which blessed you. Amen. And so they bought these spices and, and they were on the move. Amen. These women were on the move. They didn't have it all figured out. They, they, they didn't go through the analysis of paralysis. They were just up early and they just decided, we're just going to go there and handle our business. Thank God for faithful women, amen, that don't back down in the midst of what looks like a circumstance. 
I know that uh, many of you uh, are, are women of your household and it, it looked like there were some impossible things that could be figured out, but you took a step of faith in the Lord and you just knew that you were going to have to figure it out as you were on the move. Amen. Amen. I know I'm preaching to somebody. Amen. See, 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 they expected that Jesus Christ was going to be dead when they got there. They expected that Jesus Christ would have been laid out in the tomb and, and maybe the three of them perhaps or they would find somebody nearby that could help them to move this two-ton two boulder. But when they got there, their expectations had to be elevated because something had happened. An angel informed them, you are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He's not here. I could just see him now. Jesus is risen. And they're looking around like, what you talking about? He's risen. Jesus Christ is resurrected. He's not here. That, that, that doesn't meet my expectation. I expect him to be right there. And that's the problem right now. We expect God to be where we want God to be. When God's going to be wherever he want to be. He's going to do whatever he wants to do. So Jesus Christ, he's, he's defying logic. He's defying the five senses. He's defying philosophy. In this dead situation, in this vicious spiritual battle, the expectations of the women had to be raised. And there are some expectations in this church that have to be raised. You expect things to be dead, but you ought to expect that God is going to make a difference in whatever you're going through. They have likely seen a many crucifixions now. They've seen many folks who have been crucified on a cross. And now they had Jesus to have that experience. And so that in lies their expectations. When we have an empirical understanding and we say, well, this is how it happened before. That's how it's going to happen again. We don't leave room for God. I said we need to leave some room for God. And so death had grabbed hold of a many lives but we have to understand that our expectations need to be raised because death is not the end death is not the end you see how quiet it got there death is not the end death is not the end we expect to bury relationships we expect to bury potential oh we that person will never get it we're going to bury that potential we expect to even bury our very own relationship with God. Oh, I, I haven't been anywhere near God in so long. That, that relationship is dead. We expect to bury so many things, but we need to see that there is life and vibrancy as an opportunity because death is not the end. There is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. There's the resurrection of Jesus Christ. There's the resurrection of Jesus Christ, so don't give up on God. <laughs> don't give up on God, but be persistent in your faith. Don't give up on God, but have a winning, godly mindset. Don't give up on God, but take the first step of faith, and then another step of faith, and then another step of faith, because God honors our faith. Never stop believing in Jesus Christ, no matter what it looks like. Never stop praying. Never stop reading your word. Never stop fasting. Never stop quoting scripture. Never stop meditating on the word of God. Never stop giving up on your relationship with God. But remember what God said. Yea, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Be strong in the Lord and know that he is with you. And understand he'll never leave you or forsake you. Raise your expectations to be godly expectations this morning. The resurrection of Jesus Christ makes the difference. God raised Jesus from the dead and he will also raise you from the dead. The resurrection of Jesus Christ makes the difference. There is nothing outside of the control of God. We know this because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is our example. And if Jesus can do it and Jesus can go through it, so can we. The resurrection of Jesus Christ teaches us here that uh, it makes a difference because it ensures our regeneration. 
This regeneration is basically a 10 cent word. It means that you have new birth, new start, new day, a new beginning. What, what it means, this regeneration is that you can let your baggage go in the past and have a clean slate when you believe in Jesus Christ. The resurrection of Jesus Christ means that you don't have to be trapped in the past and stuck in the past. And so many times we get hoodwinked, we get psyched out, we fall for the okie doke because we got tripped up on something in the past. I need you to say right now, I'm letting go of my past. Now since you let your past go, don't nobody else try to pick it up and throw it right back at them. Because sometimes we got folks that want to pick up your past and throw your past in your face. But you got to know that you have a new day, a new start, a new beginning because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Them bags are let go. I don't have, I have a clean slate. First Peter 1 and 3 says, praise be, to the, be, praise be to God and Father our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. He's talking about being born again. We're born of the spirit. We're born into the family of God. And with that, we have a guarantee of a resurrected body suited for perfection, suited for fellowship, suited for obedience with God. You see, once we believe in Jesus, we are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Once we believe in Jesus, God gives us his Holy Spirit, which basically is his resurrection power. That we have the Spirit of God to teach us all things, to lead us and guide us and show us the way. We have the Holy Spirit that when we do something against the will of God, we'll grieve and have godly sorrow. We have the Holy Spirit that when we mourn because we see evil things and bad things in the world, that the Holy Spirit will comfort us on every side. And we have this because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And the resurrection of Jesus Christ makes the difference. If Jesus Christ was still walking amongst us, still teaching like he did the 12, he would have never went to go sit at the right hand of the Father after the resurrection. And if he wasn't sitting at the right hand of the Father after the resurrection, he, the, the Father would not have poured out his spirit on all flesh. So it was to our advantage that Jesus Christ had died and rose again and ascended and sit on the right hand of the Father because now we have the abiding of the Holy Spirit. And so we have this resurrection of Jesus Christ making the difference because we have a re regeneration through the spirit. But we also have the promised regeneration of the body. First Corinthians uh, chapter 15 verse 50 says, I declare to you, brothers and sisters, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. I want to talk to those for a minute who says, well, you know, uh, uh, I, I'm good just like I am right now. That that heaven is where I'm living right now. That 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 this is all I need is what I got going through right now. If you think that this world that we live in is heaven right now, I got something for you to think about. How in the world that you have a heaven where cops are killing innocent black folks on the street? How you have a heaven where everybody can't get decent health care? How you have a heaven where death is snatching loved ones away? How you have a heaven with hospitals and jails and prisons and folks are hungry and, and there's medication that can heal us and the pharmaceutical companies don't let it out? How can you have a heaven like that? This is not heaven. Flesh and blood cannot enter the kingdom of God. I know that we have a philosophy that seeing is believing. And we want to hold on to this flesh and hold on to this body as good as it is and as nice as it feels. But God has something greater for you. He has a holy and perfect glorified body that will never be destroyed. I declare to you brothers and sisters that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. And if you think you're going to heaven with the body you have right now, you need to come to church and learn what the Bible actually says. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1 verses 18 to 20, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy place. 
You see, the scripture said that you may know the hope to which he has called you. God has called you the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy place. You have a glorious inheritance that is made available to you through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The resurrection of Jesus Christ makes the difference. Yes, we have the Holy Spirit. Yes, we have the promise of a glorified body. But the resurrection of Jesus Christ makes the difference because we have resurrection power over sin. Sin reigns supreme on earth. Ever since Adam had eaten of the forbidden tree of knowledge of good and evil. All of us have been stained by sin. You might not have done something that got caught on the videotape. But you've been caught in the Lord Jesus Christ, heavenly DVR, that deed and that thought that you thought nobody heard. The Lord heard that. And it's on the DVR in heaven. But you know, once you believe in Jesus, the Lord deletes that from his DVR, never to remember it again. But you got to believe and receive Jesus Christ. The resurrection of power over sin is resurrection power over sin basically means you can now live the godly life that the Lord has for you because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You talking about how you got so many different hard relationships to make it through. I don't know how I'm going to make it with so and so relationship. Give Jesus a try. Give this resurrection power of Jesus Christ a try. You may be wondering how you're going to raise a child and how you're going to make it to the, uh, the holy matrimony and how that's going to go from five years, 10 years, 50 years to uh, what uh, we have here with uh, 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 Brother Grace, some 60 some odd years. And you want to you want to know how you're going to get there. It's going to take the resurrection power of Jesus Christ in your life to get there. You want to talk about how you're going to have some good self-esteem and stop hating on yourself. And all the time when you get alone, you always try to beat yourself up. And, and you got wounds deep down on the inside because you haven't quite learned to see yourself how God sees you. It's going to take the resurrection power of Jesus Christ to show you that you're fearfully and wonderfully made. That you're black and beautiful. That the way God made you is to be glorious. And he said when he made you that you were good that it's going to take the resurrection power of the Lord. The resurrection power of the Lord that you receive, it gives you the ability to live a holy life. It helps you to walk in the footsteps of Jesus. God says, be holy, for I am holy. Holy living is not the same as being a good corporate citizen. It's not the same as not just having a jail record. It's not the same as getting straight A's in class. Living holy is not about what man thinks makes a good living. Living holy is according to the standards of God. It's the B-I-B-L-E. That's the book for me. I stand upon the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. We so hoodwink and trapped to what it means to live in mainstream America. We are not able to hear what our Heavenly Father has for us as children of God. See, when you believe in Jesus, you're a child of God. You can't be a child of God and then get your marching orders from the world. We need to get our marching orders from the Bible. It says here that holy living, holy living is more than being a good corporate citizen because holy living means you got to love your enemies. Holy living means you got to bless those who curse you and bless those and do not curse. Holy living means you return no one evil for evil, but you overcome evil by doing good. Holy living means do unto others as you would have them to do unto you. We used to sing this song when I was a little kid growing up in the Pentecostal church. We used to sing, if you live right, heaven belongs to you. If you live right, heaven belongs to you. It's because of Christ and the resurrection of the Lord that we can live right, live right and have power over sin. The resurrection of Christ makes the difference. The resur res resurrection of Christ makes the difference because all who believe in Jesus can receive this resurrection power. It's an, only an act of faith. You can't work for it. You can't pay for it. You can't put it on layaway. You can't 
pay for it with your credit card. You can't take out a loan for it. You can't barter for it. You can't print money for it. You can't steal it. You can't do nothing for it except receive it by faith. This resurrection power, this, this, this resurrection salvation that comes, is, it comes through faith in Jesus Christ. The resurrection of Christ makes the difference. And lastly, it makes the difference because it ensures that we will receive a perfect resurrection body. And God prepares us for heaven. 1 Corinthians 6 and 14. By his power, God raised the Lord from the dead and he will raise us also. We have God's declaration that he shall be raised and that we shall be raised. And if the Lord says it, you can believe it. Heaven and earth will pass away, but the word of the Lord will last always. 1 Corinthians 15 and 20 teaches, but Christ has indeed been raised from the dead. The first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. A fruit tree bears fruit after its kind. An apple tree will bear more apples. A pear tree will bear more pears. But this tree, this, this spiritual tree, Jesus Christ being the first fruits, meaning that there will be others who will bear fruit after his kind. There will be other resurrected fruit. Those who will grow up from the grave. Those who will hop over the grave. Those who will die and find themselves in the kingdom of God because the resurrection of Christ makes the difference. He is the first of our resurrection crop. With the resurrection, you will see the, the body and the spirit. And when he was resurrected, he will never die again. And this is a great theological truth. We see this here because the Bible gives us a foretaste of the resurrection all through the Bible. When we see the miracles in the Bible, when the Shunammite woman's son was raised by Elisha, that was resurrection power, but he would die again. When the army was raised in the valley of dry bones, when Elijah said, can these dry bones live? Yes, there was a great mass army there in the valley, but they would die again. When J Jairus' daughter was raised by Jesus Christ because she was asleep, yes, Jesus Christ woke her up, but she would die again. When Eutychus was dead and Peter had brought him back through the power of the Holy Ghost, he would come up, but he would die again. When Tabitha was prayed for by Paul and she was raised from the dead, she would die again. They were brought back to life to live but only to die again. But Jesus Christ was the first fruits, and he was resurrected to never die so that all those who believe in him, it says here in the word in John 11 and 25, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Uh, the one who believes in me, though he die yet, he shall live. Uh, you're going to live because of the resurrection power of Christ. Uh, and that is what makes the difference. Uh, you're going to live because death can't hold you. Uh, death can't keep you. Uh, death has to let you go. Uh, because Jesus Christ, uh, he overcame death. Uh, he overcame hell. Uh, and he overcame the grave. Uh, the resurrection of Jesus Christ makes the difference. Uh, because death is destroyed. Uh, and we have access uh, to the tree of life. Uh, so the expectation. Uh, that we see the women had uh, that Jesus Christ was dead uh, we have to believe uh, that Jesus Christ is alive uh, he's alive and well uh, never to die again uh, and for those who believe uh, and receive Jesus Christ uh, you too uh, will never die uh, though you live uh, you have Christ uh, and you will never die uh, Old things passed away. Uh, all things become new. Uh, because you're a child of God. Uh, and you belong in the kingdom. Uh, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, it makes the difference. Uh, it gives me the regeneration. Uh, I have new birth and new life. Uh, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, it makes the difference. Uh, I have resurrection power. Uh, I don't have to give in to sin. Uh, because he that is in me uh, is greater than he that is in the world. Uh, I don't have to give in to sin. Uh, because I got the Holy Ghost uh, to lead me and to guide me. Uh, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, it makes the difference. Uh, 
it ensures my justification. Yes, I did some wrong, but Jesus died in my place. And he's the propitiation. That he's the perfect sacrifice. And when he shed his blood, it washed away the sins of the world permanently, yeah, completely, yeah, totally, yeah, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, uh, it makes the difference, uh, what it means, uh, as I have a spiritual body, and I have a heavenly body, that God prepared me, uh, to go to heaven, uh, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, uh, it makes the difference, uh, death is destroyed, uh, I will live, uh, death is destroyed, uh, I will live, uh, I'll have life, uh, I have it more abundantly. Death, uh, you have no say. Uh, sin, uh, you have no control. Uh, because the resurrection uh, of Jesus Christ, uh, it makes the difference. Uh, I looked at my hands. Uh, my hands look new. Uh, I looked at my feet. Uh, my feet do too. Uh, I have a new talk on my tongue. A new sight in my eyes. Uh, a new thought in my mind. Uh, because Jesus, uh, he makes the difference. Uh, he went to a hill uh, called Calvary. Uh, he died. Uh, and I'm glad he died. Uh, and on the third day, uh, he got up uh, with all power. Where heaven and earth in his hand. Uh, Jesus, uh, he makes the difference. Uh, I'm going to run on uh, with Jesus. Uh, I'm going to run on uh, with the Holy Ghost. Uh, I'm going to run on uh, and please uh, my Heavenly Father. Jesus, uh, he makes the difference. Jesus, uh, before me, behind me, uh, above me, uh, below me, in me. Uh, Jesus, uh, makes the difference in the life uh, of the children, in the life uh, of mommy and daddy, in the life of uh, uh, fathers, uncles and cousins, in the life uh, of aunts and uncles. Jesus, uh, makes the difference in the life of uh, a deacon and deaconess, in the life uh, of the pastor, in the life uh, of those who believe. Uh, Jesus, uh, he makes the difference. The resurrection of Jesus Christ will make the difference. Hallelujah. The resurrection made so much of a difference that Mary Magdalene heard and believed. And she went with a message. This woman who heard the word of God, she heard it and believed. This woman whom many would think would be of very little value because she was possessed with seven demons. This woman, this valuable and precious woman in the kingdom of God, the resurrection of Jesus Christ made the difference and she believed. And she went back and she told those disciples, the one who should have been expecting this to happen. But as most women know, men can be clueless at times. <laughs> but nevertheless, she was obedient. She went with a message. He lives. If Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless, and so is your faith. More than that, we are then found to be false witnesses about God. For we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead. But he did not raise him if, in fact, the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If only for this life we have hope in Christ. We are all people most to be pitied. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all died, 
So in Christ, all will be made alive. The resurrection of Jesus Christ makes the difference. He is risen. After darkness had its say, on the third day, the tombstone door rolled away. Again, Jesus walked, talked, touched, and ate. And all witnesses testified, death is not its fate. He is risen because the resurrection of Jesus Christ makes the difference. The once scarred fleeing disciple crew turned around realizing the prophecies were true. With the faith immensely greater than fear, they sacrificed it all to make the good news clear. He is risen, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ makes the difference. Jesus bore the world's sin upon the cross, sacrificing himself so no one would be lost. His work was sufficient, but a response is required. By grace we are saved when our belief transpires. He is risen, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ makes the difference. Faith sends an invite to start anew. Give Christ your burdens and notions untrue. The resurrection of Jesus Christ makes the difference. The doors of the church are open. If you find yourself today desiring to be closer to the Lord, Come, beloved. Softly and tenderly, Jesus we'll pray with you and is pray for calling you. you. Come, beloved. I dare you to give Jesus a try. Earnestly, patiently, Jesus is calling you. You can come as a candidate for baptism. You can come from Christian experience. All he is saying. Come, beloved. All that he wants you, wants you yes, to come do, beloved. is come home, come home, come on home. If you desire to give your life to Christ, now is the time to come. Softly, you can come and recommit yourselves if you find yourself Jesus, out of the church. He's calling you. just feel you. a little distant. You want to recommit yourself, please come. Earnestly, patiently, Jesus is calling you. All he is saying. Hallelujah. All that he wants you, he wants you Hallelujah. to do. Yes, is Lord. come on home. Yes, God. Come on home. Come on home. Thank you, Lord. Deaconess Cookie, please come. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling you. Please, please pray with them. Amen. Earnestly, patiently, Jesus, he's calling you. Praise God, saints. Brother Mike, can you hear me? All Hallelujah. He is saying, Thank you, Lord. Will there be another? All that He wants you, He wants you to do is come Thank on home. Thank you, Lord. Home. Hallelujah. Come on home. There's room. Come on home. There's room. The lights are still burning. Yes, God. Yes, God. There's food on the table. The family is waiting. Yeah. He's waiting for you to come on home. Amen. Come on Amen. home. Amen. Deacon Walker. Come on home. Deacon Walker, we have one over here. Softly and tenderly. Yes, God. Jesus. Is calling you. Will there be another? Now is your time. We'll pray with you and pray for you. Patiently, Jesus is calling you. Yes, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come.
Praise God, saints. We thank God for Resurrection Sunday. Hopefully everybody can hear me. Um, Reverend Gray, can you hear me? All right. Okay. All right. We'll go ahead and now uh, we'll pray. We're going to ask the Lord to, uh, on this Resurrection Sunday, when we celebrate Christ and the fulfillment of prophecy, we'll go ahead and pray and just thank God for allowing us to have a new start. Let us pray. Father, Lord, we thank you for your goodness, Lord. We thank you, Father, for fulfillment of prophecy, Lord. We thank you for rising so that our lives may have meaning and our lives may have direction. Father, we pray on this Sunday. We pray, Lord, for each and every person who's logged online. We pray for their families as well. Lord, you know our needs. Father, you know, Lord, things in you know our deepest thoughts. And so, Lord, we commit our lives to you, Father. And on this Resurrection Sunday, our prayer, Lord, is that your Holy Spirit may continue to star us and Lord, that we may come to you and Lord, that our lives may have meaning because Lord, we each have a divine purpose. Lord, again, we pray for blessings for each and every person, Lord. Father, we pray, Lord, that you may continue to lead us starting this day and Lord, that we may continue living for you and Lord, doing that which you intend us to do. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity, Lord, to experience this Resurrection Sunday. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, come home. Come on home. Yes, Lord. Come on home. Come home. Yes, Lord. Come on. Come home. To come home. Yes, yes, home. yes. Come, beloved. Come, come home. Come home. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank the Lord for being a good God, a great God, a mighty God, resurrected God. It used to be a song back in the day. It was called, I Got the Power. And Jesus Christ has all power in heaven and earth. And as you believe in him, you have that same resurrection power. So you can say, I got the power. What's ironic about that song is that it's called Snap. So remember, when you're about to snap, you got the power. Amen. <laughs> Amen. If all hearts and minds are clear, could we please rise as we prepare for our benediction? one more gift to give you actually two more gifts to give you all right one is I want to make sure you know your power word before you leave here today you can always call on the name of Jesus Christ That's right. amen you can call on the Lord at any time So on three, we're all going to shout. Even if you don't believe in shout, you're going to shout. <laughs> Amen. We're going to shout Jesus on three, okay? One, two, three. Jesus! For the Son, one, two, three. Jesus! For the Father, one, two, three. Jesus! For the Holy Ghost, Amen. And my children, I heard, I heard every last one of you. I heard you. Amen. Let's give God some praise for the children's program. Amen. Amen. I believe we have two members of the church. Uh, Tatiana, 
And Roman, can you please come up, please? Amen. Just please come up. Let's present them. Let's present them. We're present them. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Could you please turn and face the congregation? Let's give God some praise because this family has come forward, accepted Jesus Christ, and has joined St. John's Baptist Church. And to God be the glory. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. 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 Sister Tatiana, this is your church home. And we are going to be family the right way. Amen. We thank God for Roman. You'll be uh, hearing from uh, the deacons and deaconesses. Deaconess Fitzallen, myself, and we're going to make sure we bring you in here the right way so that you can be a part of this branch of Zion. Again, let's give God some praise. Praise God. We thank God for all of you. It's good to see all the families out today coming out. You're always welcome here. You're always welcome here. If all hearts and minds are clear, I gave you your first, your first gift, which was you can always call on the name of Jesus. And for my children, there's ice cream after service. Amen. Amen. We got some ice cream for the, for the kids after service. Amen. So please make your way downstairs to the fellowship hall for ice cream. And may God bless the ice cream. Let us have our benediction. Gracious and wise Heavenly Father, we love you, we praise and adore you, and we thank you for such a great Resurrection Sunday. We thank you for all who have come out. We thank you for all the children. And we pray, dear Lord God, that we can leave this place with our power word, calling on Jesus, and that we know that we have the resurrection power of the Lord in our lives. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his presence with exceeding joy, to the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and forevermore. And all God's people say, Amen. 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 Greet somebody in Christian Amen. love. Amen. Amen. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life I'm so glad you came to save us You came from heaven To show the way To come to the cross My dead to take From the cross to the grave To the grave to the sky Lord, I lift your name on high. You came from heaven to earth to show the way. Came the earth to the cross. My dead to pay from the earth to the cross. Praise to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high.